Welcome back. My name is Patrick Nolan. I'm an attorney licensed in the state of Missouri. This is Pat Talks Law. Today we are going to talk about riots and insurrection and storming the Capitol. We are not going to talk about politics. Okay, so I want to talk about this. We've heard the political class, both sides of the party divide, um, and even some libertarians discussing the protest that invaded the capital, the national capital yesterday, as insurrection. I want to start and back this off a little bit. And let's consider what we're actually talking about. Okay. Now, the use of the term riot may be appropriate. When it comes right down to it, a riot by law, and we're going 18 U.S.C. section 2102, a riot is a public disturbance involving an act or acts of violence by one or more persons, a part of an assemblage of three or more persons, constitutes clear and present danger or shall result in property damage, um, um, personal injury, acts of violence against an individual or the person of an individual. Um, wow, they're just stopped right in the middle of the road. What is going on? Um, now, that's basically what it comes down to. And I'm not going to read you the statute. Uh, if you want to go look up the USC, go ahead. That's 18 USC 2102. So, was the incident yesterday a riot? Well, there was definitely a threat of property damage. There was a window broken. However, lawyers talk about this stuff because that's what we do. And I don't know. Because threat of violence, well, did the, did the protesters make any overt threats of violence? Um, well, I didn't see any media coverage. I wasn't there that said that they threatened violence. And maybe they did. If they did, it's a riot. If they didn't, damaging the property of an individual, a person, is the government a person? Well, yeah, I don't know. That broken window could be property damage, could qualify this as a riot because of the broken window in the Capitol. However, if the government is not a person, and I'm not going that far down the rabbit hole today. Um, yeah, shout out to Happen Morph. But if the government is not a person, then breaking the government's property during a concerted protest that would otherwise meet the definition of a riot isn't a riot by virtue of breaking, damaging property or threatening to damage property. It's only a threat of physical violence or the act of physical violence against an individual that would apply then. And if they're not threatening that violence, then you may not have a riot. Now, let's set all that highfalutin legal talk aside for a moment and just simply agree that yesterday was a riot. Okay. There was a, by and large, peaceful protest and there were bad actors that rioted. There were more than three of them ergo you have a riot does that inculcate everybody outside protesting you know that's going to be a question for the courts to decide if they attempted to prosecute everyone however immediately after this happened and even during it's going on you had political leaders i'm not going to say who but on both sides refer to this as an insurrection well i take issue with that and here's why. The okay, insurrection is defined. It's 18 U.S.C. 2383. Okay. Whoever sets, whoever incites, sets foot, assists, or engages in any rebellion or insurrection against the authority of the United States or the laws thereof, or gives aid and comfort thereto, shall be fined under this title and imprisoned not more than 10 years or both, and shall be incapable of holding public office under the United States. Now, Sets foot, incites, assists, engages in any rebellion or insurrection. 
that's that's what we have there so is this an insurrection against the laws of the United States well if breaking the law and creating a public disturbance is insurrection then we have a lot of instances of insurrection anytime somebody breaks the law against the United States that can be considered an insurrection now an insurrection a rebellion Okay, that's a state of citizens who are un unjustly take up arms against the government. Now, in this case, yesterday, you didn't have citizens taking up arms against the government. You had citizens that were assembling. They were redressing their grievances to the Senate, albeitly in a very poor manner. Um, they did involve themselves in a riot, some of them. So... Were they in a state of insurrection? No. They were most definitely breaking the law. Okay? They were somewhere where they did not have a right to be. They were doing things they did not have a right to do. They damaged government property, which they did not have a right to do. Um, so, but is it insurrection? No. They were not taking up arms against the government. It was not an insurrection. The use of the word insurrection by people is the very poor language, and it's part of the problem we have that we have to elevate the rhetoric to stupid levels about everything. I'm not going to talk about politics. You deal with your own politics. I'm talking about rhetoric and stupidity. Um, if that bothers you, I'm sorry. Well, I'm, I'm really not. But so. But let's talk about recent examples of insurrection that we have seen in our society. From June 8th, 2020 through July 1st, 2020, a section of Seattle was in open insurrection. The Chaz and then Chop zones, citizens took up arms threw the governmental authorities out, declared an independent zone. The people that participated in that were in open rebellion against the United States. They declared an independent city, nation state, within the borders and boundaries of the state of Washington, city of Seattle. Now, they were in a state of insurrection. There would have been absolutely nothing legally wrong with sending in the army and putting that insurrection down most thoroughly. Now, politically, yeah, it would have been horrible. But we're not going to address the political side. Uh, politically, it would have been bad. It would have been a horrible, horrible, horrible um, public interest. But they were in a state of insurrection. The people protesting at the U.S. Capitol, even the ones that participated in the riot, are more aptly referred to and looked at as the protesters in April of 2020 that stormed the Michigan State Capitol while they were armed. However, firearms are allowed in Michigan State Capitol. There's nothing, they weren't breaking the law. What they were doing is shutting down government operations while they made their protest. Again, that is more of an apt comparison to insurrection. Now, Michigan, yeah, that was resolved. They sat in, they sang, they disrupted operations, and then ultimately they left. Um, in the U.S. Capitol, they came in, they disrupted operations. One of the Capitol officers committed an act of violence against the protesters. If you really want to get down to the definition of riot, the rioters may have participated in a riot. Capitol Police certainly did. They were the ones that threatened violence. Now, that's kind of a ridiculous statement. Someone's going to pull that out of context. But there's two sides to every story. 
that's the flip side. So where do we go? What is going to happen? Well, there are going to be people that are going to be charged. We are not going to see Buffalo Man charged. We know who he is. Okay? He was out as an activist protesting and starting violence for BLM activities. We know that Buffalo Man is a paid actor. <clears throat> we know that. That has been discovered and presented. So, he is an outside agitator. Will he be charged with anything? It's not my call, man. I don't know. If it was my call, he would be. Um, you know, will we know who the instigators were? Yeah, probably not. Were the instigators the Proud Boys? Probably not. Were the instigators the busting Antifa folks that came in to start trouble? You know, maybe. We don't know. Were the instigators the far right, typically law-abiding conservative voters that support Trump and believe that Biden stole the election? You know, it doesn't fit their profile. They're not the people that storm the Capitol and break windows. They're the people that sit in their coffee groups and their prayer circles and complain in prayer and pray about it. They're not the ones out there taking those kind of actions. So, who's behind it? I don't know. We're never going to know. Um, that doesn't mean you let it go. But, when it comes right down to it, was it a riot? Most likely, yes. Was it insurrection? Oh, no. No. The Whiskey Rebellion, that was an insurrection. The South seceding, that was rebellion and insurrection. Um, you know, we have numbers of small insurrections and rebellions throughout our, our history. This was not an insurrection. This was people getting pissed off, protesting, and then some bad actors converting that, stealing the protest, turning it into a riot. So, do people have a right to protest their government? Yes, they do. Should they? Yes, they should. Do they have a right to disrupt government operations? Well, you're crossing into some lines and you're going to break some laws. The question is, is are the laws just and should you disrupt an illegal government operation? Um, well, first, you better be right. Okay, that's not something you can be wrong on. And it's not something you can be mostly right on. Okay. If you're going to disrupt a government operation, you had better be right. Because you are going to be charged. Now, I don't want to get into the politics of why the protesters were there. I don't want to get into the politics of the people who are for and against them. Frankly, I think you're all a bunch of jackasses. Um, the bottom line here is our government hasn't functioned the way it's supposed to for many, many years. If you'd like to fix our government, I have a couple of simple steps to do that. First, under the Nolan plan to fix our government, move tax due day from April 15th to the first to the Monday before the first Tuesday of November. Second, eliminate all governmental tax withholding. You owe the government tax money, you have to write a check. That check is due on the Monday before the first Tuesday of November. Third, I would restore the balance to Congress and eliminate the direct election of senators and return the election of senators to the states. Senators were not supposed to be super congressmen. Senators are supposed to represent the state, not the people. 
those are the three things I would do. If we did those three things, our government would fix itself over 20 to 40 years. I promise you, if you have to write a check for your taxes on Monday and you go vote on Tuesday, you're going to pay a lot more attention to what the people you're voting for are espousing. That's all. Please hit like, subscribe, you know, share this shit wild, and uh, we'll be talking again soon.